Uh, dyslexia. How, how much? I got a couple guys that are leaving here. How much time we got? Ten. A little time still. Uh, I opened up a bill file last year. Ran it through um, the drafting process. Um, it was very, very late in the session, and uh, the fiscal note came back on uh, on the bill um, too high for us to be able to do something with it as late as we were in the session. And the, I, you know, I'm I'm really upset by that because it I don't I don't suffer from dyslexia. I don't know anybody. Uh, in my, nobody in my family has dyslexia, but I received such an outcry from um, the public, especially parents that have children with dyslexia, that I felt genuinely bad that we couldn't get it through in time. So it's obviously going to be a different story this year. We've already got a drafted piece of legislation. We know how much it's going to cost. We'll be early in the game, which means that we can tag those funds early enough uh, that we won't be stuck at the end of the road with no money. Um, so the concept of this bill, we don't, we don't do today in Utah, we have very little as it relates to training for educators on dyslexia. Yet we do have a really strong program for K through three reading. And the evidence would suggest that um, uh, if you can read by the age of third grade, by third grade, you have a much higher success rate coming out of third grade to the, through the rest of your schooling. And that's why there's been a focus on K through three reading uh, in our state. Yet we sometimes run into problems where you have this small percentage of kids, two to five percent with as many estimates as we can, that literally look at the word and they can't put it together, right? That's what dyslexia is. It's just an inability to, to comprehend the word. And there are varying levels, right? It starts, you know, sometimes it's mild, sometimes it's more severe, um, sometimes they grow out of it, sometimes they don't. But what I've heard from the parent community as it relates to this is the schools are not even notifying us if they find it. And what I hear from the educator community is, we don't know how to find it. And we do have these great IEPs that can direct us um, to help a student that may be struggling to read, but we don't necessarily know if it's dyslexia, we don't know how to, to fix it. And so what this legislation attempts to do, and we're one of the first states in the US to do it, is to say, we need to provide specific guidance to teachers, and, and more importantly, to reading coordinators on what dyslexia is, uh, on what the warning signs are, and a notification requirement from the school to the parent that, hey, your child might have dyslexia. We encourage you to evaluate resources uh, and how to fix this. I don't believe that it is a school's job to fix a, a, a I, I hate to use this word because I don't think it's true, but a, a medical condition. I don't think that's the school's job. But I think as a parent, if my child is in school all day and they notice certain signs that they've been trained to notice, if they will just notify me as a parent, that my child might have one of these things, and here are some remedial things you can do. That empowers me as a parent to take care of my child. That's what the legislation attempts to do. Thoughts? I like it. So, I, this is going to be popular, but I'll say it anyway. If my child is coming home from school, and disclaimer, we homeschool, and... So they're they coming home from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but if, I, if they were a public school, and they came home and they're through third grade, and can't read, right? I'm going to take some initiative to try to find out what is going on with that child, right? I mean, to have this a wholesale program, and I don't know if it's in every school or every school district, I don't know how big this is gonna be, but to invest that kind of resource on so in something that it seems like a parent's responsibility should cover or being able to identify, and, and maybe they might need some help figuring out what to do next, but at least that identification thing just seems like it should so, happen naturally. So a wholesale, a wholesale program is probably a little rough. I mean, it's $132,000. So it's not, a, uh, it's not a monolithic program. And the intent is to teach the reading coordinators in the school what to look for. They're already doing it. So when a, when a, a teacher says, this child's not reading right, we need to have the reading specialist to talk to them when the reading, the reading specialists are not trained in any of these things, right? So they see a child that's struggling, and they're very good, this isn't a criticism of them, right? Sure. But they see a child that's struggling, and they see certain warning signs, but they don't know what they mean. That's the intent, is to teach them, hey, this might be one of the things that's going on. And I think if it's third grade and they're notifying them, we're already late. Mm -hmm. This is something they'd be noticing in kindergarten and first grade. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I understand where you're coming from, I don't know that it's a, I don't know that we could characterize it as a wholesale, broad, massive funding effort around one particular reading disorder. 
So is that an annual 130? It's a one-time $132,000 request from USOE. That's what they believe the fiscal impact will be to them. We can have further discussion, though, if, if you're still concerned, George. Yeah, I, was, I was kind of thinking along the same lines. You know, it's, it seems like, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you're looking at kindergarten through third grade, there would be a point where, you know, the, the teacher or the aides or whoever is helping should be able to identify, you know, okay, there's a problem, and be able to notify the parents through parent-teacher conference or whatever. So yeah, it's kind of it's one of those one of those deals that you really have to kind of think about. Well, I, I just wonder too, Scott. So I, I I put myself in the position of a parent, and a teacher says to me, "Your child's struggling to read." And I say, "Okay, what do I do?" And they say, "Well, we don't really know, but your child's struggling to read." Right. There's not an empowerment there. It's just okay. So what do I sit? Do I read with them for hours on end? Yes, you do. Okay, so I read with them on hour. They're still not getting it. Yeah. Now what do I do? Um, as a parent, I, I want to take responsibility for my child. I absolutely do. But I also know that if there is a reading specialist in the school that can't identify certain problems, then why are we paying for the reading specialist? Right. Let's just make sure they're empowered to, to know what they're supposed to look for yeah. and train them. That's my thought. 